Welcome to Time to Teach with Tammy, the podcast that gives tips, advice, and suggestions to teachers by your real teacher. So sit back and enjoy, and oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe. And we're back. Welcome to episode 29, Teaching to Each Learner, part three. This is the third episode, um, which falls in the student-centered series. Um, So it was kind of like a mini-series within a mini-series, if that makes any sense at all. I'm not sure it does, but uh, that's kind of what I do and usually do that well. In any case, today is the last episode within the series. We are going to touch on how to really teach to each learner uh, during your writing time. For me, that would be a writing workshop. And if you didn't catch part one and part two, you definitely want to go back and catch it. It does not have to be in order for you to understand it, but you definitely, for you to get the whole overview, because I touch on all parts of literacy, or I shouldn't say all parts, because I only touch on certain parts. So that was a big fat lie. But I do touch on um, student reading time, independent and self-reading. And then of course my teaching within that component. And last week's episode, episode 28, was all about word work time. And then this episode is writing workshop. So before we begin, um, it is time for the new segment of wins and fails for the week. So I have a huge win, you guys. I mean, this is a huge win. I have forever been hearing about Voxer, which is an app. Um, You can download it on your smartphone, iPad, and now it's available on desktop. Um, well, your computer, whatever that might be. Uh, and um, it's basically a communication application. And, you know, I just have been hearing so much about it and really had every intention to check it out. And I think I started several months ago by signing up for it and then never doing anything else with it. Again, so like me. (laughs) I feel like my brain moves at a much faster speed than the rest of me. I can't keep up with everything I'm trying to do. So things remain um, ideas and plans until I can really execute them and do something with it. But anyway, I'm officially on Voxer and oh my goodness. Okay, so I did an episode about Twitter and the power of Twitter. Um... I just feel like Voxer is probably going to be a great extension of that because there is like a walkie-talkie feature in in um, in Voxer, so you can leave voice messages. So this clearly makes communicating much easier. I oftentimes will find uh, that I would like to just speak something instead of typing something, and this does it. Of course, there is a feature to text. So you can do that as well. So I'm already in two Voxer groups. One is for educator podcasters. And then um, a second one, which is, I don't even remember the name of it, but it's for, it's an actual book study for a specific book. Uh, So yeah, I'm so excited for that, you guys. So that is a huge, huge win for the week. If you have not checked out Boxer, you probably want to check it out as well, because I feel like I will be unleashing the power of Voxer, and I think that will probably also be an upcoming episode when I learn more about it. Of course, that has nothing to do with why you should be on Voxer, but you should just be on there because I think it's pretty awesome. And I think you will probably think it's pretty awesome as well. Okay. 
fail for the week. I, I'll just equally as big of a fail. So um, my laptop is really taking a dump on me. It just, you know, it was it started last week or was it this week? No, it was last week that it just start, started to get so slow to the point where it would not function. I could not do anything on it because it just took so long. Anytime you try to open a tab, any time you try to do something, way too slow to actually work on it. And uh, the tech department at my school, they are fantastic. I mean, they are constantly working on tech issues. Um, this is a laptop that's checked out through the school. So whenever there's an issue, I'm very fortunate to have their support. But in one day, they were able to help me and um, I got the laptop back and it worked beautifully for two days and now it's slowing down again. And I am suspicious that it's something with Google Chrome because Google Chrome seems to be not functioning at all. And someone suggested that perhaps there's a virus. I hope that's not the case. I'm able to work on other web browsers like um, Microsoft Edge, though I do not find that to be as, you know, easy. Well, it's easy, but there are many things I can't do on there. Like some images don't seem to show up as well. Um, certain sites that I use for my um, artwork and podcasting just won't, I can't open it at all. It's not just not um, something I can do. So I, it really makes Microsoft Edge a uh, web browser that I cannot use. Uh, but I was able to download Firefox and though I'm still experiencing that there there's, you know, some lagging and time spent in opening new uh, new tabs, it's nothing like what I'm experiencing with Google Chrome. So anyway, so that's kind of a fail, although it's still workable, which is nice. And then I'll just um, have it looked at next week when I return, but that is my fail. Okay, moving on, we're going to go ahead and get this party started, the party that is episode 29. So I just want to briefly touch on again about um, why I'm doing this little mini series within the mini series. Basically, I do believe that when we are teaching to each learner that that is student centered because we're giving students what they need. And I do think that's what we should be doing in education. We need to, however daunting of a task it may seem, um, we have to give students what they need. And I'm not claiming to be perfect at it. I'm just sharing my experience and how I go about it. And of course, learning and growing every day in what I do. So a little bit about our writing workshop time, because that is what this is going to speak on. I um, am a huge fan of the workshop model. If you've been listening to my show, you know that already. So I hate to bore you with that and won't go too much into details. But I just think that Lucy Culkins is a master at differentiating because of the whole way that workshop is designed. I mean, you're basically you're not teaching to any specific prompt per se. You're not teaching to a specific book that you have to try to, you know, specifically write like that kind of book. It's more like a genre. So right now we are doing narratives and um, we've been doing narratives for quite some time. And um, so basically workshop is going to give each student every day one little tidbit uh, uh, that they can use to really just increase what they're doing and improve what they're doing within that genre. And of course, sometimes those tips can be used in other genres as well. Um, so because of that, then students will choose their own topics to write about. Now, uh, it is going to fall under whatever genre you're working within. So narratives, all of these are going to be, you know, true stories about their life right now. So students are sticking within that genre. Although side note, I got a couple of students who try to 
uh, throw in a little bit of fiction in there. So uh, that happens. But I mean, basically, they have so much choice within the choice of narrative true stories. I just feel like the way that workshop is set up, it's just already is helping students to differentiate or helping you to different differentiate and teach each learner because it gives so much student choice and um you know students have the freedom to kind of choose when to start and stop I, there's never a day where i say okay we're starting well i shouldn't say there's never a day when we start our new unit they will be finished by then because we spend a couple of weeks of my class getting ready for publishing because it's such a long process with my second language learners um, who are primarily six years old. So just it's kind of slow going. Probably in a different classroom, it might not take so long, but I really give my kids a good two weeks to get close to publishing. And then we close off our unit with some type of celebration. And then I open up the new unit. So that's really the only time that I would be saying, okay, we're all starting this kind of a piece. Um, but typically within a unit, students are deciding, okay, I'm finished with this book. Now I'm going to start another one and I'm going to write about um, my big fabulous birthday party or whatever it is that they're deciding. They are making those decisions. In fact, um, one lesson that I do, which probably comes from workshop, is um, you know, you're know you the boss of you. So you decide, you don't need your teacher to help you make those decisions. You don't need a friend to help you make those decisions. You're the boss, you get to decide. And my students love that. They love being the boss of themselves. I think it's very liberating um, at six years old, especially when your world is so much of you know taking orders <laughs> from others. Uh, if you will, um, then I think I imagine that this feels just you know a little bit outside of what they're used to. So they they really do love that aspect of oh I'm going to decide I get to choose that. So it's fantastic, absolutely fantastic in those terms. Now, um, just kind of speaking on a little bit of how exactly do we get to teach to each learner? Well, I think to open that up, it's really important to kind of explain to you how my workshop day looks like. So to be getting a writing workshop, um, again, I'm following the uh, the workshop models. I'm going to open up with a connection. And sometimes that's just going to be a reference to what we did the day before. Um, writers yesterday, you learned that, da da da, whatever it was. Or sometimes it's a little story that um, that I might open up with, like mm, last week or the week prior. Just a lesson that I'm kind of remembering as I kind of opened up talking about how I was driving through the city and I saw this stop sign. It helped me to stop my car. Different signs that we see as we're driving that really helps me to know what to do as a driver. That was the connection that was like, you know what? Punctuation also helps um, helps us know what to do. And as I'm thinking about this, that was not writing workshop. That was reading workshop. However, many times reading and writing, not even many times, it all goes together. But um, just an example of how you can use a story within within your connection. So connection, and then I will directly state the teaching point. Today class, I'm going to teach you how you can use punctuation to, to make your story come to life or whatever the teaching point is. And from there, I would demonstrate that skill or demonstrate what I really want students to do. And then I might invite them to try it with me. Um, that would be the active engagement part. And then independent part, they would kind of go off and do it on their own. Sometimes if it's something so very new, I might actually have them practice it at the carpet so I can just kind of monitor and then send them off one at a time or monitor and send them off a group at a time however I decide to do that and then as they're going off and they're working independently that's when I can pull groups and when I can also um, pull students well not even pull but go and sit up sit right next to them during conferences during writing workshop I 
don't pull a whole lot of groups. I do a lot of, I do more conferring than anything else. However, I recently have started to do a lot more groups than I have in the past. And um, that's partly because, you know, I spoke last time about when you see a shared need among your students, grab them, grab them and pull a group. Uh, but what I'm starting to do right now is I students have recently set their own individual writing goals. I have helped them in the past. I've set their own writing goals like, OK, let's work really hard on, you know, making sure that every every um, s sentence starts with a capital or let's use finger spaces, whatever the goal might be. So I'm trying to like really look at all of their own personal goals that they have now set for themselves. And I did kind of like a very uh, lazy spreadsheet. I say lazy because there was, I just hand wrote it on a sheet of paper and it looks not beautiful at all. Um, but it was just a quick way to at a glance, look at what the shared goals were. And so now I'm trying to pull groups based on their, their shared goals. And actually this is an idea that came out of a one day workshop that I attended. There was like an hour workshop on like next steps with student goals. And that was one of the ideas. So I thought, Ooh, I'm going to do that instead of just pulling groups based on where I was seeing needs, but looking at the student goals. And so I've been doing that. So that's another way that you can really teach to your learners needs is looking at their goals or goals that you've set for them and um, pulling those groups based on based on what they've decided they want to work on and of course if you're pulling a group you also want a, a lesson plan so what I have is for each goal point I have about three to four lessons already planned out just really the teaching point so much more not more than um the detailed plans of that but that way I know and I can keep track of who what groups I've met with and what lessons we've done so that's an excellent way I'm finding that you can teach to the learners um, you do want to have that organized in a system I have a binder some people do not like binders I live out of my binder um, almost literally just kidding but I kind of live out of my binder in terms of the school day so um, the other way to do this is you definitely want to have a system where you're tracking what your students are doing. So what are their strengths and wh where, what are their areas of improvement? And this is where I can really get to the heart of what my students need. Like I said, I've, I prim primarily have been doing this in in my conferences with them during conferring, but have started to pull um, some more groups during writing time. This is excellent because I can see, I can look at what their, you know, what their writing habits are and go from there. So just like if you listened to the reading workshop time, this is going to follow really the same kind of protocol that I will I can literally go to a student and I can sit and I can observe. Usually within a minute, I can kind of see what that student is doing really well and what that student isn't doing that he or she should be doing or could be doing, I should say. Um, and this is going to be a lot of times based on, you know, lessons that you have already done, but you see the student hasn't picked it up. Or let's say it's the student who, you know, there's someone who is doing all the things that you've taught. You can think ahead of what would be future lessons or what would be appropriate. A lot of times right now, where if my students are doing all the things that we've learned, a lot of times it's a matter of them adding more details to their stories because, again, my students come in non-writers. Um, so to get, you know, a sentence for the beginning, a sentence for the middle, a sentence for the end, out is great that's what actually would be expected at this point of the school year they came in not non-writers so in a couple of months this is where we're at so if I see students successfully doing that okay well let's add on a few more details um, and that um, that is great for them it allows them to advance where they are they're not really being held back by 
you know, something that's not appropriate to where they are. They don't have to be held back. They can continue to advance in where they are. That speaks to what they need. And same with the other students who may be like, whoa, I can't add details because I'm still struggling to form a complete idea and get that out on paper. Um, then that's fine too. You can really differentiate to that student's need. Maybe they need some more scaffolding. Maybe they just need some more tools to access what they're thinking because of course we see that too. You're going to have students who, you know, they're taking a lot of time to think or a lot of time to generate their ideas. And, you know, maybe it's because of a lack of self-confidence or a lack of really being able to tap into what they already know, but maybe don't even know that they know, you know, we have those kind of learners. We have all kinds of learners really. Um, so it's, it's great. You can sit there, observe, and then, um, I, what I'll do in my binder, I have a page for each student, and of course their page grows as my notes grow, and it becomes a monster of a binder. Um, I'll just literally write when I'm seeing their, that they're doing, and then um, come up. I can come up with a teaching point right then where I see like, okay, this is probably the area that's closest to their next step because I don't want to give them something that's so far off from where they are. Maybe those are future goals and I can note that, but I can see, okay, this student is really good at getting ideas out, but um, I'm having a really hard time reading it because of X, Y, Z, whatever. Let's just say it's because they don't use finger spaces. So um, I might, I might kind of do another little lesson on that. And then um, I will to the side of that write down my my a future next step with them. Like what what else do I think would be appropriate? So maybe also I'm noticing that they don't use capitals and periods, but I don't want to teach that right now because if I teach them ten things in one lesson, that's overwhelming. So I'll just make a note of what is my next step with that student in terms of writing. And then the next time I sit down to meet with that student, I already have a teaching point. Um planned out. And um, so that's how I, I basically tackle the the teaching with the students is, you know, what am I observing right now? And or maybe it was a teaching point that I had already noticed from my last sit down with the student. And now I'm going to address it and teach to that point. Well, that is going to conclude today's episode, episode 29, teaching to each learner part three. I hope that you have really enjoyed this series and that you've been able to take something away from it. Um, not just, this is not just the ending of this little mini series of the teaching to each learner, but also the ending of series five. That is exciting. Uh, what's also exciting is Next week is a big episode, episode 30. I always find um, <laughs> every time we hit another 10, that is big for some reason. I don't know. Maybe it's just in my mind. But um, so with episode 30, I mean, it feels like kind of like a milestone, I guess. Every, every 10th episode feels like a milestone. But it's also going to be the beginning of a brand new series. We've been doing, we've been in series five for two months now. So I am excited to move on. We have series six coming up. Series six is all about amazing units by design. That series is going to focus on really designing units that are meaningful and um, to students, but meaningful because it's teaching to a really big purpose and you know the nitty-gritty on how to do that so you are not going to want to miss that series in the meantime if you'd like to connect via twitter you can find me there at tammy j123 that is t-a-m-i-j-123 and if you're finding value in this podcast would you share it with others i'd appreciate that all right that's it I'll see you next time. Wait a minute. Wait one minute. Before you go, don't forget you can catch our show notes online at www.timetoteach.libsyn. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. We're also on Facebook at Time to Teach. 
don't forget to check out our Facebook group, Teachers for Effective Curriculum. And if you're an educator with your own podcast show, I invite you to join our brand new Facebook group, Teachers Who Podcast. Let's grow a community where we can network, problem solve, and discuss anything and everything podcast related. I'll see you there.